Grüße, Bachel Kher. My name is Marion Eismann. I'm a storyboard artist and also studio art instructor at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. For today's demonstration, I have chosen a sculpture from our collection by the artist named Edgar Degas. Times were different, but still the same around 140 years ago when sculpture artist Edgar Degas created the little dancer aged 14. I chose the sculpture for my demo because I empathize with the quite realistic and revolutionary portrayal of her character. Degas represented a working class subject and simply brilliantly captured the difficult tension between art and life back then and now. Okay, let's get started. Most of the time I start with the figure's head. A circle or oval shape attached to a neck extending into a longer spinal column. A line, a curvy line of action that helps me define the gesture and spirit of the pose. Keep your spine young and flexible and your character will look dynamic and alive. As too straight of a line may appear stiff and static. At the same time, I'm building up volume by adding the ribcage, almost sculptor-like. I tend to construct the body from the inside out, starting with a skeletal structure and gradually build up volume and shape proportions. Make sure that the weight-bearing leg aligns with the neckline, so it appears that the person is standing straight and not tilting or falling. When I draw the traditional way or analog, meaning non-digital, I rarely use an eraser. That is another discipline that I adopted throughout the years. In other words, I live with the actions rather than hitting the return command that doesn't always pan out so well in real life. I generally plan out and rehearse my steps in my head before painting with watercolor, start loose and reinforce my lines, go stronger when I'm happy with the layout or underlay drawing. When it comes to any design challenge or character development, I try to be authentic and portray my subject's elegance and dignity. Just like in music, in my visual work, my emotions are expressed in the weight I put in a line or the way I arrange shapes according to the hierarchical importance. Dances do the same in any form of dance, be it tango or jazz, it's a matter of following rhythm, also shifting and proportioning of weight. Last but not least, it's everyone's individuality and emotion that informs the tone and color of a piece of art. Eventually, things may turn from lyrical into abstract, which I achieve by reducing, breaking down the subject to its core essence for maximum expressiveness. Looping back to what was looked at a modern subject, a student dancer of the Paris Opera Ballet, my whimsy free and delicate sketch may want to allude to or convey the predicament such dancers may have found themselves surrounded by their male protectors. In either case, it boils down to the power of empathy. The more I observe and listen, the more I get to know my subject and consequently will be able to create a believable artistic interpretation of it. Color to me means love the opposite of fear and ultimately means the expression of my zest for life and reminds me to live it to the fullest every day. One thinks and acts, one paints and opens up hearts. I'm now preparing my colors for the skin tone and dress or suit of the dancer and have in mind an organic looking color scheme. Using a warm yellow ochre, some magenta red, a little bit of an ivy black and cadmium yellow. To tint or lighten a watercolor, I use more water or less pigment instead of using white color, at least when it comes to watercolor. In order to shade and create darker tones, I add a speck of ivy black to any color I wish to desaturate or shift to a darker hue.
I use shading to indicate or emphasize the shift of a form. I look where the light source comes from and tone down the opposite side to create a form or core shadow. At the same time, I keep the highlights or reflective lights untouched, revealing the white of the paper or the tone beneath my layer. Lastly, I add a casted shadow of the figure, which helps to ground and pronounce the positioning of the ballerina's feet even more. Then a few additional darker accents to underline the volume and three-dimensional impression of her romantic tutu. The way I apply color may sometimes appear impulsive or with an urge, which is nothing else but my reflex of my thought process making it onto the drawing surface. It's an individual rhythm and character of any sketch artist or painter, a signature style. Thanks so much for watching, I look forward to seeing you again and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to check out my website marianeisenman.com and if you like follow me on my insta at marianetheboardartist. Hope to see you soon. Ciao!